On today's episode of the Bootstrap Biz Advice Show, I'm going to walk you through how to create a worksheet using the website Canva. Now, it seems like Canva's intent behind these templates were to provide resources to teachers. However, a lot of online entrepreneurs use worksheets and checklists as a means to grow their email list. So if you are looking to provide more value within your blog posts, worksheets are a fantastic way to capture someone's email address. So that's what we'll be walking through today. If you would like access to my VIP vault, which is my epic resource library, filled with cheat sheets, tutorials, checklists, and even sock photos for free, just go to LaShondaBrown.com or you can click on the link in my description. Without further ado, let's hop in. So to get to the worksheet templates, we're going to type in worksheet at the top and then click on the design. Now you can see all of the worksheets are eight and a half by 11, which means they are the size of a full sheet of paper. As you can see, the worksheets are designed for the academic setting. However, we are going to use these as a framework for opt-ins for our email list. The best way for you to capture emails online is for you to provide value and then provide an additional resource that's related that someone has to give you their name and email address to download. So say, for instance, if you're doing a blog post about a topic, say, for instance, uh, 10 ways to clean your house for the holidays, if you have a checklist of the supplies someone would need to purchase from the grocery store, the person would be very likely to give you the name and email address because you're making their life easier by providing them another resource. So that is the frame of mind that you want to think about when you are designing your worksheets. Now, there's also ones like this Sudoku worksheet that is just for fun. If you want to do fun things like that, you can. But the focus in this video is how to design an opt-in in the style of a worksheet to grow your list. Now we're going to scroll down and really what we need to look at is not so much getting caught up in the kitty graphics, but in the literal format of these documents. This particular one that says blog writing prompt is perfect because you've got these boxes, you've got a really fun style. This is one that you wouldn't have to change very much. And if we continue to scroll down, the book review one is another one that could be a great format for an opt-in. Let's keep scrolling. I love this book review one. That's a fantastic format for a worksheet. And we'll keep going down. Here's one that's grocery run. One of the things that I pay attention to when I look at templates within Canva is, will this make my life easier? And one of the most difficult things to design in Canva is simply a straight line. I'm not sure why it's so difficult, but to get straight lines in Canva and to make sure that the spacing is consistent can be a chore. So a format like this one for a narrative writing exercise could be perfect to utilize for your opt-in. So at the end of the day, one of the main things that you want to do when you design your opt-in is to make sure that your contact information is on the document itself. So if we keep scrolling down here and we just decide on a format, let's say we're going to do this one here. This is a fantastic design. However, it is not promoting your brand. So what you want to do, my favorite thing, is just create a simple rectangle. And what you're going to do is either drag it along the side or drag it along the bottom. My preference is the bottom. And you can change it to whatever color you like. And what you want to do is to put your contact information, a very simple URL, and then maybe your email address. And the reason why I recommend doing this is because if someone really liked your opt-in and wanted to connect with you further, this is a great way for you to continue to market your brand. Also, if someone happens to share the opt-in without going through the process of signing up for your email list, at least your branding is on it. 
So I would definitely put your email address, your website, and if you've got a logo you want to throw in, I would also put it on that as well. I would save it as a PDF standard because it will be a smaller file for someone to download so it'll take up less space on their computer, but the quality will be fine for them to print at home. The other thing is, even though it is beautiful to design it with tons of color, if your goal is for someone to print this out and use it at home, maybe you want to offer a fun version and a print-friendly version. Print-friendly would simply mean that you limit the colors on the document. So if I wanted to do a print-friendly version of this one, all I would do is maybe copy it and take out some of these colors in the background and make it very simple. I could even change this to black so that you're using very little color ink on the printer. I know a lot of people appreciate a print friendly version because it does allow them to extend the ink in their home printer. So that's an option. You can create something that is super beautiful and super fun, but if that person wants to print it out, they have the option. They have the regular version and a print-friendly version. So that's what I would recommend when creating worksheets within Canva. Look through all of those extensive templates and decide what are the elements that I'm trying to use for my design. Don't get so caught up in the dinosaurs and the kitty stuff that you lose sight of the time savings that Canva has provided you by giving you templates. I hope you found this information useful. Remember, this video is part of the Canva Create-a-thon. So in just a moment, I'm going to show you the secret word. Make sure you write it down so that you are ready to enter the giveaway on Christmas Day. The secret word is worksheets. We are in the home stretch of the Canva Create-a-thon. If you have missed some of the secret words previous to this video, make sure that you go back and find those words. You have to be the very first person to let me know all 25 words to win the Squarespace website. All you need to do is click on the link in the description. You'll see LashondaBrown.com slash create and there is a button that will lead you to a form. In the form, put all 25 secret words, and when you receive your receipt for sending in the words, it will say at the top what number you are. If your response says, number one, you've won the Squarespace website, I'll have your email address and I will get in touch with you in the new year to start working on your brand new site. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I teach you how to grow your biz without breaking the bank. Until next time, to ta for now.